Eva Jonstadt here is a member of, a citizen of Iceland, member of the Icelandic Parliament, a member of the Pirate Party, which she will explain. <laughs> she is also a practicing poetician. <laughs> Brigitte does many things. She doesn't have a website. She doesn't have a powerful organization. She travels all over the world advocating, teaching, taking wonderful activist positions. One of the noteworthy things that Brigitte did was being a co-producer of the WikiLeaks video, Collateral Murder. The other night when she told me about this, she said it changed her life. And I reflected later and I thought, you know, it changed mine too. So Brigitte's honored member of our panel tonight. We have Norman Solomon, journalist, media critic, anti-war activist. I know Norman from campaigning for Congress. Came to my backyard a couple of times and talked. And his website is Roots Action. We're going to learn how to fight back. Our final panelist is Nadja Kayali, who is uh, a member of not just a member of works for and representative of the Bill of Rights Defense Committee. The theme of this panel is banishing civil liberties. What do you think the general public doesn't know about that they should know about? And Nadja, that's your question. So uh, how many people here have ever been told that they're a little bit crazy, uh, might believe in too many conspiracy theories, uh, they're paranoid, right? Hey, okay, raise your hands, raise your hands. That's me, right? You know, you're not crazy. Um, and in fact, the more that I do this work, the more I realize that all those conspiracy theories, so-called conspiracy theories, um, they're real. And uh, I assume that probably most of the people here uh, read the news, have about what's going on right now, but just to give a very, um, so, uh, to give you a very brief breakdown of the revelations last week, which I'm sure other panelists are going to discuss. Um, last week, of course, we learned about the um, generalized NSA spying that's going on right now. And to be very specific, there are orders, um, we know that there's orders to Verizon, but very likely to most major phone companies that allow the NSA to get the metadata, so-called metadata, for all phone calls that are made, and that includes domestic phone calls. And metadata can include the length of the call, the number you call, who you're calling, um, and actually based on uh, some court decisions could include location uh, from cell phone towers. So that's one piece of spying, of course, that's going on. And then the other thing that we heard about was the PRISM program. Um, I think it's going to be fascinating to see what happens as the tech companies, particularly those located here in the Bay Area that might have slogans like, don't be evil, um, get, to, get to have their say here. Right now they're under gag order, so they can't talk about the program and what they're actually providing. And it is unclear. Um, for those who have looked at the slides, uh, it appears that the government has direct access to their servers. Um, what that actually means is unclear. What what information the NSA is getting is unclear, and I don't want to say something that's not accurate, but I would just say um, keep, keep reading the news and we will see what the full extent of the spying is. Um, so, uh, um, so one of the things that we heard about, of course, is uh, the courts, and I think a lot of people still have a belief that the legal system is a way to address a lot of these issues. I think a really important case everybody should know about is Clapper versus Amnesty International. This is a case in which journalists, um, act activists, and Amnesty International challenged the FISA Amendments Act, which is exactly what is allowing the spying that's happening now, and that they were under imminent threat of surveillance. And they couldn't prove that they were under imminent threat of surveillance because the surveillance is secret. And that is pretty much exactly um, what we are living in right now. So um, one other thing I want to mention, there was a case that came out last week, Maryland versus King, in which the Supreme Court approved uh, genetic, genetic testing for arrestees. I will talk about that case maybe a little bit more later, but I just wanted to mention that um, Justice Scalia in his dissent said that he was very concerned about the about the NSA spying, we know some of it. We certainly don't know all of it. 
Um, and the other things that are out there are equally frightening and people don't talk about them as much. The Next Generation Initiative is another thing I would absolutely call a panopticon. This is a database that can store information including iris scans, palm prints, um, it can aid in facial recognition, and this is a database that is being turned on across the country without any sort of oversight from elected officials. And um, for those who are familiar with the Secure Communities Immigration Program, which links criminal justice databases and immigration databases, the turning on of secure communities across the country was the first step in the turning on of NGI across the country. And um, that information comes from documents obtained by Freedom of Information Act requests. Again, it's not a conspiracy theory, it's very real. Another thing that is in every state, in every community now, is fusion centers. These are databases, again, that are connecting different areas of law enforcement that didn't used to be connected. So if you can have, for instance, um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about Berkeley, um, Berkeley is actually very different when it comes to fusion centers, um, but you can have um, basically a report that goes from local law enforcement to um, your state emergency management agency, then directly to the FBI, and it can go to the FBI eGuardian database, and it will never leave once it's there. That's basically a black hole for data. Um, so I think I'm going to stop there, um, and I just want to say uh, before we continue that I am so honored to be on a panel with these distinguished panelists. To know is that reassurances by high officials, can you hear me? Yeah. Or the president himself right now, <clears throat> on, on the limits of the surveillance of this country, of all the citizens, are reassurances on that point are worthless. They carry no information, whatever. Uh, the, uh, just as George W. Bush looked the country in the eye through the television, lens years ago uh, and said, we do not intercept any American citizens without a warrant, without a warrant. That was a flat lie and was eventually proven, though unfortunately without documents. Nobody uh, got documents in Congress, was not able to get any documents. As a matter of fact, I remember one exchange uh, from the brief hearings that came out of that when Leahy, Senator Leahy asked uh, Alberto Gonzalez, who was then the Attorney General, do you by any chance open mail? And Gonzalez's answer was, I'm not here to testify about that. And Leahy said, I understand that, that's not what we ask you, but since you are here, I'm asking you, do you open mail? And Alvaro Gonzalez's answer was, I'm not here to testify about that. Now that is pretty much of an answer, actually, if you're, uh, if you're listening, but uh, it wasn't followed up. Congress did nothing about it. Eventually, they did what they could to legalize the, uh, the warrantless wiretapping that was going on. Although, when they talk about legalizing it, they can't make it constitutional. The fact is, that's not the same. When the president says that everything we're doing here is legal and refers to interpretations of his own, of the, uh, of the laws that Congress has passed, like the Patriot Act, you cannot repeal the Fourth Amendment by a president or by an act of Congress. <laughs> the public should understand that the constitutionality of any of this has not been, in fact, actually addressed even at the Supreme Court level, and it is blatantly unconstitutional. That's what Snowden now was providing us documents with uh, of a program that is blatantly unconstitutional. And if and when he is brought to trial, as he seems to expect uh, realistically, uh, it will be an interesting question raised. Uh, it's never been raised in court. Can it be illegal, prosecutable, convictable to tell secrets that reveal crimes or unconstitutional behavior? Uh, actually, that's never been the judge. People don't realize that, by the way. That's never been uh, a matter of judgment, even the Supreme Court or any lower level. It's directly raised by uh, what Snowden has revealed here. When Ron Wyden, Senator Ron Wyden now, asked a similar question to uh, James Clapper, the Director of National Intelligence in the Senate uh, in March. Do you collect data from the telephone calls of millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? And Clapper said, no. Now he's now been confronted by Snowden this week with the documents that prove that that was totally false. 
And Clapper actually was asked recently how to explain his answer. I think it was by ABC. And he said, well, a difficult question. That was the least untruthful answer that I could give. Uh, meant that he was allowed to give, I guess. Now, a somewhat less untruthful answer would have been yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, the, sh the short answer is no, the, short, the long answer is yes. Uh, and uh, what that means is what I said in the beginning, that Clapper, what he says to Congress, I don't remember whether he's under oath or not, but that's not significant for an official of the U.S. government. He's really not allowed to lie to Congress uh, in public like that. The, uh, uh, that means that he was, in fact, lying, and that means that any assurance that all they're doing is collecting metadata simply conveys, as information theorists would put it, no information. There's no information in that, that assurance that they're not. Let me tell you what I think and I don't have the proof, and I don't have the documents, and I call on people like Snowden, maybe Snowden will come up with it, or other people who know the truth on this, to tell us the truth, whether I'm wrong or not, in believing that in fact they do not content themselves as they collect all this data with who it's from and who it's to and when it was and how long the call is. I feel quite confident, I could be wrong, I feel quite confident that they are recording and storing indefinitely all the content of every email, every fax, every uh, computer data, every like that. In other words, that privacy, it's not a question of balancing privacy, as the president has put it, and security concerns. He said you can't have 100% security, obviously true, and 100% privacy. We have zero percent privacy right now. That's not a matter of balance. Uh, it, has, it has nothing to do with balance, and it is not required uh, by the requirements of national security. What it is, is the collection of data that the Stasi, the secret police of East Germany, who call themselves the German Democratic Republic, that their motto, which in the movie, uh, The Lives of Others, which should be reissued right now and seen by every American, if possible, the motto was to know everything. They couldn't have imagined what is available now to the NSA, the FBI, the CIA, who constitute, as I see them now, the United Stasi of America. I just want to thank everyone that has come here tonight. Uh, it is so amazing to see how many people care. Thank you. Um, uh, I think I'm just going to tell you a little story. Um, so, in 2011, the FBI came into my home. Remember, I am a so-called parliamentarian, and lots of people trust me with their private information. All my letters, all my papers, they could see whom, whom I had been with, when, and for how long, and where. Um, they went through all my letters to my mother, they went through all my poetry, um, they basically went through all my bills and so forth. And they didn't really enter the front door. They came through my back door. They came through the back door of the internet. And this has not caused a lot of discussion in the United States. However, there is a union among all parliamentarians, or all nations, except I think the United States and maybe one or two others, called the International Parliamentary Union, and it's been around since 19, 1887. And they were very worried about this, because once you establish a surveillance on the representatives of the people that are supposed to be serving, you are eroding the basics and the foundation of democracy. And I encourage you to look at the resolution that all, everybody that had a seat in the IPU, I think the United States is not there because they don't have veto rights. No, everybody's equal there. It's dangerous. Uh, and um, so you can find the resolution if you go to the EFF.org website, which, by the way, you should really, and if you are concerned about what's happening with the NSA, uh, and many other similar cases, you should really support the EFF. Uh, and um, you should really go and look 
look at what they're doing. They have made a really good timeline, for example, uh, and explanations about what this NSA uh, leak means so far. Uh, and what I think that the United people in the United States might not be aware of is that um, the people in Europe that are also being surveilled if they use digital devices and social media by your NSA, our leaders in the many, many different countries in Europe are so worried about this probing into the privacy of the citizens of the EU that they are thinking of building a fortress around Europe. And the fortress is not against China, to protect us against China, Russia, North Korea, Cuba, ooh, and all the other dangerous places in the world. No, it is to protect us against the surveillance and the invasion in our privacy from the United States. I just also want to encourage you, I'm, I'm so moved by how many incredible people I've met since I came here. I've been in the United States for about 11 days now. Uh, I've had the privilege to meet many of my heroes, including Daniel Osberg, uh, and, uh, but many, many others. There are so many amazing fighters here. And don't ever forget how incredibly strong you are. You, the only thing you need to remember to do is to just stop the trolling. Find the stuff you can agree on that is the single most important thing to do in your society. And Bradley, I know that you, most of you know this, but you know, free Bradley Manning, support Bradley Manning, support Jeremy Hammond, support Barry Brown, and don't forget Snowden. Snowden. Uh, and, um, I feel that we have a profound opportunity to change things now. Thank you. The Bill of Rights is in peril, and the Bill of Rights are part of human rights. The Bill of Rights hangs in the balance, and many lives hang in the balance. It is all interwoven together. The surveillance state of the United States equals the warfare state of the United States. Mm -hmm. The attacks on our civil liberties are totally entwined with the attacks on the people of Iraq, of Afghanistan, of Yemen, of countries we don't even know about are being attacked. It's impossible to have the consent of the governed when the governed don't have the information, the fundamental information, about what's being done by their government in their names with their tax dollars. Passivity feeds war. Passivity feeds taking away civil liberties that we learned about in civics class, that we were taught to be proud of, that we thought of ourselves as nurtured by. And what we to believe the overwhelming rivers of drivel that come from commercial and supposedly non-commercial outlets like NPR and PBS is to be dissuaded from the basic understanding that just as it's not enough to plow the fields if you want to harvest a crop, that it's necessary to see the project through, it's essential to plant those seeds to nurture, to propagate, to harvest. It's also impossible to live in a democracy that deserves that term unless we organize. We've got to organize. And there is a script, and it's being played out. It's being played out by people, including the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, who does not deserve to be in that job. That would be Diane Huntsman. It's being played out by a constitutional law professor 
who we now learn has no business working in the Oval Office. <laughs> These are not new truths, but they need to be relearned and in a jiffy by us. They've been said by many, many people in many, many ways. When Martin Luther King Jr. talked about what he called the madness of militarism in 1967, he may as well have been talking about the madness of militarism in 2013 because that madness is with us just as much today. When Nobel winning biologist George Wald spoke in 1969 at MIT across the river from his Harvard, and when he said that it is the business of our government to kill, that our government is, as he put it, in the business of killing, that also is true today. And for us to pretend otherwise, to float along on the fairy tale, to believe that we don't live in a warfare state or a surveillance state, is to enable the deception that's being used by the corporate mass media and the elected and appointed officials in Washington. And because we care about the Bill of Rights, because we understand that lives are in the balance and the future has to be fought for, we're going to organize and organize and we're going to fight like hell. 